This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that I use for all of my website needs. In this video, I am going to explain how I created these moody edits, black and white edits using both my own presets. And I will also show you how to get something slightly near it using Lightroom standard without any presets at all. So we're going to be going from images like this, original shot images, to this, and this, to this, this, which I love, I love this image, to this, and then this one here, we're going to be going to something like this. So you'll notice that there's a little bit of Photoshop work that we'll need to deal with here to extend that background. So we'll show you how to do that as well. And then we'll do from something like this to this. And as I said, I'm going to use my own Lightroom presets to start with, but I will show you a editing technique from within a Lightroom itself as well. And the first one, first thing we'll ever need to do for all images, all edits within Lightroom, regardless of whether they're going to be black and white or not, is correct exposures if we can and uh, any kind of cropping. So we'll do that for each image as we go along very quickly. So that's okay, actually, crop wise, I might just straighten it a little bit. I'm just going to drop the exposure a teeny weeny bit, not too much. And on here as well. Now, all of these images were taken on my Fujifilm X-T5 camera, which is nice and sharp and perfect for these kind of portraits. That's okay. I'm all right with that crop. Um, now, this one we will be working on a little bit, as I said, but I'm just going to kind of start the process with that there. You see a little bit of clutter over here on the right-hand side. So... Instead of using Photoshop or AI for that, I'm just going to take that away. And it's gone. And then this one also. So for this one, I think I'm going to try the upright tool. See what that gives us. And yeah, that's okay. So I'm just going to get rid of that little distraction on the right-hand side. And leave the rest in for now. And then this one, this one's also okay. I quite like that. Might just drop the exposure. Tiny amount also. So as I said, I will be using my Lightroom presets to demonstrate this. And I think before we do that, if we look at the final images, the one that we want to do some work with in Photoshop is this one here. Okay, so this one here, we need to extend the background. So it's with Tristan looking directly at the camera. And if we go here, it's this one here. So. We're going to do some stuff in Photoshop to try and fix this issue here with the shoe and the background and all of that stuff. So we will right click, choose edit in Photoshop, edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. Okay, so what we need to do for this image in Photoshop is to essentially use AI to extract and move this background across because we've got the clutter of the table here. We've got the bookshelf, which I'm including in one of the other shots. But for this one, I don't really want to. It's too similar. So um, it's a very simple process, actually, in the latest versions of Photoshop. You can just click on the last, on the marquee tool there. And you just need to come across, but you do need to include enough of that background for it to get an idea of what we need to do. I don't need to go too far down because if you notice the floor, the light at the bottom is higher brighter than at the, the top of the floor area. So I don't want it to start getting confused there. So that there should be okay. Now, generative fill, we need to give it a command. So I'm going to give it a couple of commands and hopefully see what happens. So I'm going to say to it, extend background from the right. Oops, right. Preserve shoe. There we go. Let's see what it comes up with. Now it's going to do the generative AI. And most cases, this is a very, very good. Sometimes it gets it drastically wrong. Sometimes it gets it a little bit wrong, but it will give us three variations. So that's all right. That's not too bad. The shoe looks a little bit odd. That's much better. Much prefer that one. And that one, the shoe's off as well. So that one is pretty much good to go. We've got a little bit of darkening there on the left-hand side, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. We're, we're doing this to enable us to just drag that background across. And yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So 
I will leave that as it is. We don't need to regenerate it. We can if we wish to regenerate it again, but I'm all right with that. I'm happy with it. So I'll close that, say yes. And then that will take us back into Lightroom. Here we are. So we now have two of these images. Obviously we've got the edit and we've got the original one. So I'm just gonna remove that from Lightroom because I don't actually need to use it anymore. Just gonna take it away. I've got my original edit there. Okay, so let's go and edit some of these images. Let's start with this particular one, because uh, I quite like this one. It's quite bright in the face, so we'll need to do a little bit of work with that. So as I said, I'm going to use my Film Edition 3 Lightroom presets, which you can find a link to below and a little 10% discount code also if you so wish to use them. Um, Mullins Film Edition 3 Monochrome. And actually the one I chose for this is the Arizona Film. I really like that. It's got this little kind of golden hue to it. And you see straight away that image is just beautiful. It applies my Monochrome Arizona profile and it doesn't do too much more to it. Uh, it punches up the clarity, but it does also in, in, uh, increase the grain and brings down the uh, post crop vignette a little bit. So I really like that. So if we look at the grain, it's beautiful. It's very filmic. I just think that's a, a really nice look to it. However, if we don't want to have the grain, we can just use my utilities here to remove the grain completely. Grain reset. Actually, I like it. So I'm going to do control Z, command Z to go back and reapply that. Uh, that's really nice. Now, there's a little bit of a hot spot on the face here. So I'm just going to use my AI utilities that you can see here, all kinds of AI utilities here. Subject reduce highlight standard. Now, this will be too aggressive. So you see it's gone muddy, but it's done the job, a good job. But we have the slider here, so we can just bring it down. So we get it back to where we want. I just want to talk about the sponsor of today's episode, Squarespace. And I've used Squarespace for a very long time now, and you can use it too. You can start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. You can even sell your products and services with an online store, just like I do. Whether you sell physical goods, digital content, prints, or services, Squarespace has the tools you need to start selling online. You can even add appointments to your Squarespace website and start accepting clients if you are doing some kind of scheduling. Squarespace really is the system that I would recommend to any photographer. Go to squarespace.com forward slash Kevin Mullins for 10% off your first website or domain hosting. I like that. That's nice already. That's really very nice. So for the other edits, I would simply apply that preset to all of them, essentially. So I don't need to do that one. I will do select all of them, but remove that one. I'm just going to come over to the saved presets options over here. Mullins Film Monochrome, Arizona Film. And as you can see straight away, that's worked really, really well. And if we look at this particular image here with the background, the book in the background, I love that. I love that look. I like that kind of idea of including a little bit of story of the room that Tristan's in. And then this edit here also is nice, but again, a little bit hot on that face. So I'm just going to work on that with the same process. Just bring them down a little bit. Do a bit there. Yeah, that's nice. Looks very, very nice. Very happy with that. Um, if we look at that full screen. Yeah, beautiful. Really, really nice. Love it. This one also, great. Love all this stuff. All shot in my studio just a couple of days ago, in fact. So here we can have a look at the one with the preset applied with the work we did in Photoshop. So remember, we extended the background, just kind of disappears off to the left-hand side, which is quite nice. And again, actually on there, I think just a little bit bright on the face. So we'll remove that. Just decrease that amount there. Lovely. I really like that. Okay. So as promised, I will also show you a way of editing without a preset. If you so wish to just use a Lightroom naked, as I like to call it. So we'll use this one. Why not? Let's uh, reset that image. 
to the way it was. Now, because we're not applying any presets, we're gonna build this as we go along. The first thing that I'm going to do is just decrease that highlight a little bit, just a tiny bit. We don't need to, you can actually, if you so wish to use the masking tools in Lightroom, um, it's very good, but actually because the hotspot is just on his face, really, we don't need to go through this process. I will show it to you just in case you are interested. So we only want the facial skin and the body skin for this particular mask. So I'll create the mask. And you'll see the eyes are quite bright as well. So I'm actually going to add, using a brush, the eyes as well. Just include those. And then I'm just going to bring the highlights down across the board to about there. Yeah, that's okay. We'll just close that down. Okay, now black and white. So there's multiple ways that you can do black and whites in Lightroom. You can just simply hit the black and white slider uh, button there. And that's okay. The way that I prefer to do it personally is to just decrease the saturation. Okay, because that then gives us a little bit more control with some of the other um, sliders, etc., that we so wish to use. Now, if you remember, the way that I like to edit my portraits is in quite a uh, contrasty way, quite you know, very very kind of filmic look to it. So I'm going to increase the clarity quite a bit actually to about 25, 20, 25, maybe 20. Let's settle on 20. Then the magic in Lightroom, typically, especially for black and white stuff, is in the tone curve. You have various options here. So you can just choose a medium contrast one, which is actually a perfect, pretty good starting point at least. So you'll see the control points there and you can add to them as well if you wish. What I'm actually going to do is just drag up on the left hand side just a tiny bit, just to take a little bit of the pressure out of that and makes it a little bit, gives it a little bit of faded look to it. I'm going to pull that one up as well very slightly. It's not easy to control. Okay. That looks okay. And then when it comes to the tone in, you'll remember that the version that I showed you, the Arizona film version, had that very, very subtle golden look to it. So I'm going to use the HSL, uh, the color slide, the, excuse me. I'm going to use the color grading tools here for this. I'm just going to add a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of warmth. That's way too much. Again, it's a little bit, there we go. Somewhere like that is perfect. And I'm going to copy those settings. That's applying it to the midtones. I want it to go right across the board. I'm going to apply it to the shadows and the highlights too. It gives it that nice little golden look. Now, when it comes to finishing off that filmic look to the image, I'm going to give it that Post crop vignette. I think that's probably a little bit too much, maybe 25. And you always want to go negative here, by the way, to darken the corners. If you go to the right, it's going to brighten them. And grain, yeah, I want a bit of grain in this. It's a bit too clean for me. I like a film, a filmic look. And I will start bang on the middle, 50. See what that comes out with. Yeah, that's nice, but I'm going to reduce the size of the grain slightly to make it a little bit more film like and just touch down the roughness as well. And there we have it. Very nice, very quick video, just showing you how I made these portraits using both my Lightroom presets and also using standard Lightroom itself. Thank you very much, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave them below. Thank you very much to Squarespace for sponsoring the video and I shall see you next time.